How do we solve equations with like terms? Well, first off, we better figure out what a term is. Uh, when we look at an equation or an expression, and remember an expression has no equal sign, uh, an equation does have an equal sign. So um, this one is basically just an expression. We've got to go through and we've got to use the plus or minus signs to divide up the numbers and variables. Here's negative 2x and then it bumps into this plus sign. So this is our first term, okay? This four is our second term, and I always tell my students, make sure you grab the sign in front of it. It, it helps you out. And then the 600m is attached to the plus sign. Now, we only use the plus and minus signs to divide uh, expressions and equations into terms. We don't worry about multiplication. We don't go the m as a separate term. The m is multiplying the 600, so they're bound together. Okay, same with division. The only thing we use to separate it again is the plus and the minus signs. So we'll have plenty of opportunities to, to get this new skill uh, under control. But now we're going to talk about what are like terms. There's two different ways that you can actually look at an expression or equation and uh, determine if they're like terms. First off, I always tell my students, start with your very first term and then just scan the, the expression or equation to see if there's any other terms that have the same variable. Like this has an x on it. Does this 4, which is your second term, does this have an x on it? No. But this minus 8x, that one sure does. So we would say that the 2x and negative 8x are like terms. And notice that I went ahead and made sure that I'm considering this sign a part of the term. That'll help us out in a little bit. And this fourth term does not have an x. So we would say the fours are not like terms with the terms that have an x there. So here it is in writing. The terms that have the same variable are like terms. But also if they have no variable, like see this this 4 has no variable? Well, neither does this 4. Because they have no variable, we can say that the 4 and positive 4 are like terms. And we can go ahead and put a plus sign there if that's bugging anybody. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do, though, is we need to figure out how do we actually combine like terms. So let's take a look at an expression. Negative 3z plus 4 plus 8z minus 6. The first thing I need you to do is go through and find the terms that are like terms. So let's look at our very first term, negative 3z. This 4 does not have a z on it, so it's not a like term. What about this one? Plus 8z, it's got a z, so yeah, that'll work. Um, we say that these two are like terms, and negative 3z plus 8z um, can come together. And so the way that I do it is I tell my students is that you can literally do all of this in your head. You go, okay, this is my first term, so that's negative 3z. And then if there's some numbers that are separating it, I can basically kind of push this in closer to my first term. And we go, okay, negative 3 plus 8 is 5z. So we add our coefficients, however it, it, it shows us there. Negative 3 plus 8 is positive 5, and then we just tack the z on the end. So the negative 3z combines with the positive 8z to create 5z. Now, let's take a look at our other terms. Does this 4 have a like term? Well, it's definitely not the z terms, okay? Because this doesn't have a z. But we do have another just plain number over here that has no variable, and that's fine. We can do that. And that's the same as, hey, positive 4 minus 6. We just slide this minus 6 right up against the positive 4, and you tell me what's 4 minus 6? Negative 2. And what we do is, is that we've, we've now simplified this expression, is another way of saying it, or we've combined like terms, and we take our information and we slide them together. So we could say all of this becomes 5z minus 2. I know this answer was a negative 2, but when we slide it right up against this 5z, it becomes minus 2. And that's how we'd read it, 5z minus 2. So let's go through and try solving an equation. And this one's a little bit more difficult. I'll, I'll grant you that. 
But um, what we do is that we focus on one side of the equation and we see if there's any terms that we can combine on one side of the equation. This 16 is the only thing there that's on the right side of the equation. There's nothing to combine it with, so I know I'm just going to have 16 there. Now, let's go through and focus on the left side of the equation there. Sorry for shaking the screen. Let's look at our first term because this is a good place to start. Are there any other terms that has an x on there? Yeah, right here. What's 10x plus 2x? 12x. And then this negative 8 or minus 8, there's no other terms that are on that side of the equation that are like terms because it's 16. It's on the other side of the equation. I, I can't just combine them since they're on different sides of the equation. So there's nothing else to do with that, so I just slide it on down. And now we're left with a two-step equation. Um, 12 times x minus 8 equals 16. So add 8 to both sides. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So I'll pull down my 12x. I'll pull down my equal sign, and 16 plus 8 is 24. We're running out of room here, so let's go through and get ourselves a little bit more room. 12 is multiplying the x, so we divide by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1, and 1 times x is x. Since I divided the left side by 12, we divide the right side by 12, and 24 divided by 12 is 2. Now, the only thing new that I've taught you is combining like terms. All of this right here should be review. If not, you desperately need to go back and make sure that you're perfect on that part because that's just a, a two-step equation. But we're just combining like terms, and that's how it fits into this. Now, let's go through and check it. Um, my advice is, is use your simplified equation. After you've combined it, if you're sure you're, you've done it correctly, if you're sure, and just take this 2 and plug it in there. And so it's 12 times 2 minus 8. Plug that into your calculator. And if you get 16 right here because it's supposed to equal 16, it's correct. And it is. So to send you off before you start uh, going into all these other equations, let's give you one that's a little bit more challenging. I would seriously just pause the video, copy this down, do your very best to solve it, and check it. And when you're ready, hit play. Okay, let's see if you got it right. Um, the 85 is on the right side of the equation, so there's nothing to simplify that with. There's nothing to combine it with, so I'm just going to pull that straight down. But now we've got to roll our sleeves up, and we've got to start looking through this equation and go, well, let's see, what can I combine with the negative 6? If there's nothing to combine it with, like our previous problem, like here was a negative 8 and there was nothing to combine it with, we'll just pull it straight down. Um, this has an n on it, so no. This has an n on it, so no. But this one has no variable, and I can combine negative 6 plus 11. So let's just do it like this. Negative 6 plus 11 equals positive 5. So this goes to positive 5. And now let me just erase this little scrap work off to the side. And let's switch to a different color. And let's look at our second term, negative 3n. Well, we've already used what's circled in red. We've already used that to combine to make positive 5. The only other term there is 8n. And since it's got the n there, we're going to say they're like terms. So let's combine these like terms. What's negative 3 plus 8? Well, over here, you can write it out as negative 3 plus 8. And if you want to put the n's on there, you sure can. But negative 3 plus 8 is 5, and since they both have the n's, I'm just going to write an n there. Is it a positive 5n, or is it a negative 5n? Positive. So this is what I'm going to write right here. If this had been like a positive 3 minus 8, and we'd gotten negative 5 for our answer, I would have written minus 5n. I'm using the... Um, you know, the positive or negative value to join that up to the rest of the problem. And that's what we'll do every single time. So this all simplified down to 5 plus 5n. And we can slide this over closer to the equal sign so it actually looks like a good equation. And this is just a simple two-step equation. And then you just go through and you solve it.
And there we go. We know that n is equal to 17. So let's go through and let's check it to make sure that we're right. I know that this equation is right. So 5 plus 5 times 17 should equal 85. So let me just put in my calculator. And my calculator is telling me that I got 90 for my answer. Well, I'm supposed to get 85. So I've made a mistake. Or I've typed in my calculator wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure I typed in my calculator right. So let's go back through here and let's find our mistake. Um, let's see. I've, I've combined it correctly. This is the correct equation. Um, this was a positive 5, and I need to get this out of there. So minus 5 and minus 5. Uh, 5 minus 5 is 0. So let me draw a line through it. Um, I pull down the 5 in, and it's positive, so I, that's part's correct. And what's 85 minus 5? Oh, yeah. See that? That's where the mistake happened. When you get into a rush, mistakes happen. Now, I, I planned this mistake, but I was just trying to show you why this check is so important. 85 minus 5 is 80, and 80 divided by 5 is 16. Okay. And that means that uh, I should have multiplied the 5 by 16. Five times 16 is 80. 80 plus 5 is the correct answer of 85. And that's the reason we go through and we do our check just to make sure if we made a silly mistake, um, we can know that there is a mistake and we can go back and fix it. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to combine like terms and how it fits into the idea of solving uh, equations that have like terms. Basically you go through, you combine what you can, and after you've done that you'll have a one or two step equation uh, that you should already be familiar with how to solve. You will run into to different scenarios and questions. Um, ask me about them. As soon as you see it, write it down on your paper so that way you can ask me or, or send me a text and uh, I can get you an answer back as soon as possible. Have a great night.